This is ATL Day Ones, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. And it starts now. Welcome into ATL Day Ones. I am Jarvis Davis. That is Tanisha Batiste, who you see sitting right beside me. We want to thank you for joining us on a good old Friday. Kind of, sort of. Um, <laughs> we got a lot on board today, T, because we are going to jump into, obviously, the Atlanta Falcons pick Drake London. We're going to talk about that. Um, Ronald Acuna makes his return last night. And also... The Georgia Bulldogs out here breaking records. Uh, but before we get into all of that, uh, I just want to start out by saying thank you for, uh, you know, checking us out on YouTube. You know, all you got to do is uh, go in the little search box and search Locked On Sports Atlanta. Go to that little subscribe box. It's probably about this big. All you got to do is click on that bad boy and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to turn on those notifications. And also... We're not only on, you can see us and see our faces in it. If you, you can also check us out when you're in your car, not looking at YouTube, but on all audio platforms, wherever you download your podcast, you can find us there as well. We yeah. really appreciate you. But T, the Atlanta Falcons select Drake London, wide receiver, our hell no picks. <laughs> <laughs> We, we've been set out like it was so it was almost funny last night when yeah. i saw it saw his name wrote, come out of roger goodell's mouth and i was just like do you got to be freaking kidding me i believe as you guys would say here i'm gonna use my current voice my local voice okay. the whole atlanta was upset last night. With, with two ends. With two ends. Yeah. Right by each other. Like, what the hell? <laughs> what, Terry Fontenot? What, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Come on, man. I, now, literally, that, and, and, and I, I will not out some of our buddies in the industry, but uh -huh. there were people who were not just using emojis as in the one you use on your phone, but as in a real life emoji. You know, the, the shake in my head one where you're slapping yourself in the face. Okay, there were people who were really doing that, like, not just the emoji, I'm saying. And it, it was just a tough pill for most to swallow because really and truly, mm -hmm. yes, this is the second year that Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith are in the war room. However, the thought was, okay, this year they're going to give us somebody in the trenches up front and, and then, you know, we'll roll into the other areas of need. However, Jarvis, if we look at this thing from a reality perspective, Terry mm -hmm. Fontenot has never waned. Arthur Smith has never waned from saying that they would take the best player available. And if this was their thought, which so many boards started to flip this way right. in the last 72 hours, then that to me indicates that truly, for the most part, they thought this was their best available player at eight. Not saying necessarily that he was the one that they had on the boards all day, every day, but because of what happened in the first seven spots, this then became, in their opinion, the best player available at eight, not having to give up anything to get him. You know what? I, I, on the whole, I understand the whole best player available piece because I even asked him about that when I was down at the Senior Bowl. And I thought he gave you a pretty interesting answer mm -hmm. because I think a lot of times, you know, it's not by circumstance that, a best player available turns into a need, right? Because sure. wide receiver can be looked at as a, as a need, right? Mm -hmm. If Alameda Zacchaeus is essentially your leading receiver, right? the Falcons drafted for need last night. Mm -hmm. Who, who? How can you make an argument against what I just said? Right. If if the um, Alameda Zacchaeus is your 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 leading receiver, come mm -hmm. in your um in your wide in that room, mm -hmm. and you draft a wide receiver at eight, mm -hmm. how can you explain to me that that's not a need? You drafted for right. need. You yes. draft. I feel like you drafted for need, you know, mm -hmm. and and that goes against totally everything that you said, right? Mm -hmm. Because look who was sitting there. There were a run on offensive tackles, right? At five, you had um, 
you had uh I'm sorry, you had at five you had uh Kayvon Thibodeau. Yes. Um and then you at six you had um with Carolina Panthers was Iki Ikwanu. Mm -hmm. He was there. And then at seven, um yeah. Evan Neal yeah. came off the yeah. board. Evan Neal came off the board, right? So I'm sitting up here like, okay, mm -hmm. you still got Charles Cross, a guy yeah. who's projected to go in the top ten yeah. by most everybody. Yeah. Unless the Falcons scouting department is smarter than everyone else. <laughs> Why not go ahead and get uh, somebody that can help you build your, build your foundation? Because at the end of the day, T, mm -hmm. I'm not really mad at the pick. Drake London might end up being a, a, a really right. good football player, right? Yes. But my whole thing is, you know how big I am on vision. I need mm -hmm. to see it. I need to understand yes. it from a understand football standpoint. Yes. I understand football. I mm -hmm. may not have my PhD in football, but I damn sure got my master's. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you think about it, like, mm -hmm. but so I need to be able to understand this doggone thing. Like, because it, 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 you, you drafted a pass catcher last year in Kyle Pitts. Mm -hmm. Then you go back into that same pool and draft another pass catcher. Mm -hmm. But who's going to block for the guy that needs to get the ball to that pass catcher so you yeah. can justify your pick, right. right? You know what I'm saying? Or you had two players in the league last year that had more sacks than your entire team. Yes. I'll yes. name them. TJ Watt. Them was from Robert. my team. Yes, TJ Watt. Watt from the Pittsburgh Steelers, right? And then you had Robert Quinn. Who who had more sex as an individual than the person than your entire team? So yeah. help me to understand. Make it make yeah. sense to yeah. me that you draft back to back years mm -hmm. pass catchers, and you 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 really don't have a court. You don't have your quarterback of the future, right? Which I understand. I'm gonna give you the opportunity to get that. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. my whole thing is like, if 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 you're going offensive oriented if mm -hmm. arthur smith is an offensive minded coach yes. he wants to build up this offense and they want to outscore everybody tell me that just tell me that please yeah. so yeah. i can stop uh getting my hopes up on every every time the end of april rolls around every year and right. i'm sitting up here banging the table for a pass rusher right. what are we doing i yeah. want to see the vision write the vision and make it plain t come yeah, on I think I think everybody in Falcons Nation is asking that that question of just why. But I will say one thing the Falcons do well, and maybe this is a part of just the base of philosophy regarding, of what, regardless, excuse me, of whether you have a GM in Terry Fontenot or coach in Arthur Smith, doesn't matter. It seems like their philosophy is we go out and we get good pass catchers. And I'm not mad at that. You could right. make an argument, Kyle Pitts, Julio Jones. It, you can make an argument with that. And the other piece there that I thought was maybe it did come down to a bit of finances just in terms of looking at what the market is bearing for for veteran receivers, right? And mm -hmm. so maybe yeah. they thought, okay, we'll go get our guy since, quote unquote, he's one of the ones who was at the top of our board who we could afford and not have to go out and get somebody in free agency when we do get our quarterback of the future. Because if you're looking at him at the number eight pick, he gets paid 23.6 mil with a $14.4 million signing bonus. Maybe when you look at a $100 million man like A.J. Brown, you're thinking, okay, we can still get our uh, you know, wide receiver that we like, uh, Vincent Jackson type is what people are saying they're calling him. Yeah, then, it's and, yeah. you know, that's our guy. Now, I agree with you, however, because it still bodes the question of, okay, we got that guy, but mm -hmm. who's the guy just in terms of who can be the guy under center, who can go, who can protect the guy under center and then who can go after the opponent's guy under center. So that's what I'm going to be looking for tonight and in the rounds to follow so that you and I can decompress this whole thing on Monday and kind of look at it as a, a macrocosm. Because if I look at it one dimensionally and just this one pick, oh, absolutely, Jarvis, the base has every reason to just be frustrated, you know, just beyond just beyond all, all uh, comprehension. But if you think about it from the perspective of you didn't lose any picks, you didn't lose any players, so you have seven picks left to go out there and maybe get those guys in the trenches that you need. Let's see what Terry and Uncle Art do today. And tomorrow. Right. So, and and, and, and to, like I said, to, to put a bow on this bad boy, I, I think that, you know, there are, you know, you got two second round picks and you have two third round picks, right? 
So that, that that's that's a lot of ammunition to mm-hmm. to 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 right the ship, so yes, to speak. Yes, they don't feel yes. like they the ship is going down like exactly. and burning in hell like everybody mm-hmm. else thinks, thinks it is. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but you know, just right. from 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 my for my sanity, I'm going I'm I'm gonna wait back and and, and and see. But I can't help how I feel though, T. I understand oh, I understand yeah. having some 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 giving this thing some brevity and, yes. and looking at big picture and all that stuff. Yeah. But it's hard not to dig all deep down in that bad boy and look right. at him like another yeah. world another no, world and, and, come on man right and you know <laughs> i i agree with you because i was the one along with uh one of the uh, our head of imaging over at my other gig we were dancing around we were dancing to jig because we were like hey Steelers didn't have to give up pick or player to get their guy so yeah. you know i get it but we probably would, would have had a similar meltdown if we had not gone in the direction of either getting ourselves somebody under center or getting yeah. someone to protect the guy under center or getting somebody who's going to affect the guy under center for the opponent. That was all we, we had to see that. And so I do get it because we would have been Steeler Nation would have lost its rabbit mind if we hadn't gone in the, in the direction that we'd gone in as well. So I get it, Falcons Nation. You guys deserve to be scratching your heads right now and you deserve to be in your feelings. But let's just see. How it plays out this evening, but look, Jarvis and I, we do kind of like Petty, so we'll be watching to see what you say on social media. We will. No doubt about it. There is a lot of talent left over. I, um, one of our, one of our guys, a friend of the show, uh, Malik Willis, um, he's still out there. So you know, Boye Mafe, guy, who's, another guy who's down there at Senior Bowl who can touch the quarterback. So your guy George of, Pickens in case George Pickens, yes, just in and my case. guy Drake Jackson. So Drake Jackson still yeah. there. You know, edge rusher from out of. USC, he's still there. The other Drake, you know, can you know, I wouldn't mind having two Drakes as long as one can touch the quarterback. I'm down all for that. Uh, another talent, um, that made his debut uh, with his team last night, Ronald Acuna, Kuna, 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 what? Acuna Matata, <laughs> Acuna Matata. <laughs> nephew Ronnie made his debut last night. We will talk about all of that and another guy, another young, a young gunner. Who's starting to get find his way? We'll talk about that all next on ATL Day Ones on Locked On Sports Atlanta. 